Hi, I'm Courtney Dickinson, and uh, I'm from Ackworth, Georgia. And this is my new piece. It just came out, uh, super new, and I'm so excited about it. It's been a while, so it's great to have new music out. One of the songs on here, Young Forever, mm -hmm. talk about writing that song and, and that idea of remaining young forever, what that means to you. Well, the idea all came about in a writer's room. We were um, just hanging out, and I really wanted an anthem song, something that everyone could just get into, that everyone can relate to. Um, and if it's, you know, an older adult looking back on, you know, wow, it was really great all those years, um, or me, like right now, my age, I'm 19, almost 20, and you just kind of want to remain in the stage because it's so fun, it's a great time, you know, you get to try new things, you're experimenting with, you know, who you are and everything, so I think it's just a great, it's all about that, staying young forever, even if, you know, growing up, you still keep that liveliness and that attitude that young teens and young adults have. Yep. And as I was listening to your vocals on this, and I, I try very hard not to compare, like, oh, this person sounds like this person, but there was one name that I heard, and I wonder if you've heard that before, and that's Carrie Underwood. I've not heard that a lot. I've heard that a little bit, not much. <laughs> Young I Carrie usually Underwood. get Shania Twain, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. I've gotten that one before. I've gotten Trish Yearwood before. That's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to be compared with yeah. I would, I would be okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> The other song, Girls Are Gonna, is anthem me, but more specific, I guess, is sort of the Friday night anthem. Right. So I talk about writing that one. Well, that was just a girl song. That was just, honestly, that never, we never really had an idea for that one. Um, I was writing with Eric and Drew, and we were just in the room, and we honestly came up with the melody first. And we just started humming really cool things, and it sounded so cool. And at first, we, were, we started out, I forgot what it was, but it had nothing, it was nowhere near Girls Are Gonna. And it was about stronger. That's what we came up with. And somehow we switched to something about girls, and it was just like, wow, we could have like the girl party song. And then for me, it was something kind of like that everyone can relate to that young kids, girls are going to go have fun. For young, ad older adults, like any, any girl, any woman can, it's just a girl's night out. That's pretty much what it is. Yep. And so it's a great song. I love it. <laughs> the final song on this uh, three track EP is, and I'm so happy to see his name on stuff, is uh, an Eric Pesley song that he wrote with Sarah Buxton and Larry White. So Over the Rainbow, talk yes. about how you found that song and then what, what did you hear in that song that you go, that, that's it, that's mine. Well, I actually heard it about five years ago. Actually, it was the first time I heard it. I was doing my first EP ever and um, I was being pitched songs. That was the whole thing. I didn't really, I had, on that five song EP, I wrote, I think, about three and two I had to cut were other people's. And that CD, I was mostly just looking for really great songs. And so that was one of the songs that was pitched, actually. And at the time, it was being pitched to everybody because it was brand new. And everyone has had that song on hold. And when I met Eric Pazla, he even told me, he said, you know, everyone has had this song on hold. I'm so glad to see that someone's finally doing it. And so I'm crazy excited that I actually got it because it's I love that song. And it's just one of those feel-good songs. It's just a song that just makes you smile. and. It's kind of, it's quirky, I say, I kind of like it, you know, it's so over the rainbow and it kind of downplays the movie and the show, but it also kind of makes fun of it in a way, you know, about saying, oh, I'm so over this big city life, you know, stuff like that, Oz and everything. So I like it because it kind of pulls that side into it, but it's also just, it's a really feel good song that you just like to listen to. And so I fell in love with it the first time I heard it, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have this. And five years later, I still was like, okay, I have to have this. <laughs> a mere five years later, yeah. here we are. It seems one of those songs that you, you get out of what you bring to it as well, which I think is um, always exciting, because it means that any artist could cut it and make it their own. How did you, what of yourself did you bring to that song? Well, I think Eric Halbig really helped the producer. Um, I just kind of was like, you know what, I really, when we heard the song, the way it was demoed, it was kind of bluesy in a way. I mean, it was definitely country, but I was like, I really want to just like, let's put a banjo, let's fiddle, like, let's just add some, and just make it just this really cool laid back, because the other two songs are out there. I mean, you know, they're not super fast, but I just really wanted a laid back, groovy song that just, you just like to listen to, because that's what songs I like to listen to, so I wanted one for myself. and. I think for me, the song, it was like, I've been to LA before, I used to go out there for three months out of the year and do the acting thing, mm -hmm. and sometimes you're just like, I'm over this, I want to go back home, you know, and that's how I kind of like, I felt, I feel that way sometimes, you know, and I felt that way, especially when I was out there, 
you know, Nashville's totally different, but LA, you're just like, okay, let's just go back home and forget all this for a minute. <laughs> when you record country music now, there's a certain there's a certain reality to it, like a certain sounds that are expected right, right now in modern country music. And it's just the way it is. Um, right. People can complain, but it's how it is. How do you keep your your own voice within that framework? Because it's it, these songs sound very modern, but they still don't sound like just anything else. They still have their own identities. So how how did you try to keep that going with you know Eric's input as well? I think it was just me and Eric talking back and forth, honestly, because I was like, I love this part. I like I love fiddle and. Banjo and I, I know, I've never been all that crazy about, but I was listening, actually what happened was I was listening to a Blake Shelton CD, and there were so many banjo licks in it that weren't, they didn't scream banjo. They had this modern twist to it, and I was like, I love that, I want some of that in there. And so, and I love drums. So, I keep think that's kind of how we did the modern thing. Eric was like, well, let's put some drum loops in it, and I was like, uh, and then he did it, and I was like, okay, that sounds cool. So, I mean, it was just kind of a collaboration of us talking back and forth about all the instruments we liked and what we kind of wanted to put into it. And he really helped with the whole, you know, we need to keep this to make it still fit. And then I kind of added the, well, I want fiddle. I want that, you know, mm -hmm. so, because I love fiddle. And I, I do now, I like the banjo, so, and I love drums. So I think that's kind of how just both of us together collaborate. Yeah. I'm interested in what you said before, because um, one of the things I always explore is the relationship between happiness and success. Um, when you get to that point of, I'm over it, I'm going home. What is it that you're over? Like, do you know what that is that, that makes you go, Ugh, I'm done? And then a couple of months later, go, no, no, actually, I want to come back. <laughs> On both sides, what is it that makes you go, uh uh, and then that you end up missing again and, and get back into it? I think the over in LA was that I love acting, I do. It was great, it was awesome. But music was my calling. And I think that's what I was just over. I was like, okay, I'm done with this. You know, I met a vocal coach out there, and he was like, you know, you, you're a good actor, but you're an even better singer. He said, you can't divide yourself into two things, or you're going to get half and both. You need to go after one. And so I think that's what I was over. I'm like, I'm just done. I, I want to, and music feels like home, you know, because I, I love playing music. I love recording it. So I think I was just over the craziness. What is it that brought you, that attracts you in music that you can't get anywhere else and anything else you do in life? For me, it was the acceptance. It was just like, music felt, I mean, it, in acting, you, 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 I, I say I got my um, toughness from acting because I rejected something. But music, I... There we go. Good, how are you? Yay, look Very we good. 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 Made me who I am today. But music, it was just accepted. There was people that was like, wow, it really is, you know, you're doing great in this area. You can improve on this. And it was just, I think it was that. It was just that music felt like home. Oh. Buy this, you guys are going to love it. Um, just go on iTunes or go to CoreyDickinson.com and you will find these three songs, two that I wrote, that hopefully you all can enjoy and relate to.